Hello, everybody, and welcome to the pull-up community call number 33. Today is August the 24th, 2022. It's been a pretty sunny day outside for me. Hopefully, you've had good weather as well. My name is Mr. Mojo of the Pub Report, and I'm excited to have my friends up here to talk about the POAP community today. First, I have Beacon Chain Health Consultant Superfiz. Hello. Welcome on the panel. Hello. Glad to be here. We also have the onboarding lead and eStaker member, Nick Sorakish. Hello. Welcome up. Hey again. Good to be here. And we have Logic Beach from Grid Plus. Always a pleasure to have you up. Good to be here. We also have Amanda, who is the creation team lead. Good to see you up here as well. Good to see you, Mr. Mojo. And we also have Pop Growth Manager Anthony, or ID Centralized. Great to see you as well, brother. What is up, family? So excited to be here. But all right, everyone. Yes, very exciting to have you here tonight. So we have quite a few things to talk about. But the first thing that I want to mention is how you can get the PO app from this call. So we have been using guild.xyz for a few weeks now. And a lot of you probably understand how it works, but just in case you don't, you want to go, uh, pardon me, you want to go over to the Join Guild channel, and you're going to want to join the guild from there. And then later on at the end of the call, we will describe how you will claim our PO app. But as for now, just make sure that you go over to the, again, Join Guild channel here in this Discord, and join the guild. But all right, we're going to go ahead and jump right into it. Logic Beach, you have a few topics that you wanted to discuss. You weren't really able to be up here last week. And so uh, now is your opportunity to talk about these things. So first on our docket, we have Phonon DAO. Tell me about that. Yeah, I'm searching up a Phonon network so I can pull something and put it in the community chat right now. Um, so Phonon DAO is a new initiative that was sort of... Um, created from grid plus and what it is is a kind of a, a novel way to wrap assets into a thing called a phonon and then send it via a p2p message to somebody else and then they can unwrap the phonon and have that asset somewhere else uh, secure private and blockchain list transfers of crypto assets it sounds kind of funny it's like we went so far that into blockchain that we solved the blockchain problem um I'm just going to go ahead and post the, uh, uh, sorry guys, I'm trying to do two things at once, which is talk and All post good. a thing. <laughs> You'll get uh, so this is, the, this is the URL here, phonon.network is the site. Um, so the reason I bring it up today at the Poet Community Call is because the first testnet is now live. Um, and the way to get involved is you get these test kits, which include, uh, they call them phonon cards. They essentially operate like a credit card, but um, they're not used for any sort of USD or anything like that. Although I guess you could wrap USDC in a phone on. Anyhow, anybody who takes part in this testnet will get a PO app. Um, it's going to work as a PO app dot delivery. Uh, and I guess I should mention that these test kits that they're actually selling them, but the Rewards you actually will get in Phonon tokens at the end will offset that cost. I, I figured I should mention that because some people are like, wait, I have to buy a thing. Well, it's hardware, right? Because you're getting involved with a new system. But still, the rewards that you'll get as incentive for taking part of the testnet will offset that cost. And That's they actually give you a list of things that you should do to get involved. And you actually set a receive address. And that's the address that they'll get a list from and will do a poap.delivery. Yeah, at the end, which it's going to be going on until November 22nd. And there are still, I guess I can't say an exact number, uh, but there are still test kits available. Um, probably a good number. So if you guys are interested in something like that, yeah, please go over it. I designed the Poe app, and uh, maybe I can find it so I can post it in there. It's one of my favorites that I've ever made. Give me sure. one hour to find it. Sure. While, <laughs> I do while you're question. doing that. Okay, yeah, you can go ahead, Anthony. You can ask. Yeah, sorry. Just for a point of clarification, uh, Logic, how hard is it for someone to actually set up this node and interact with the network? And I know it's the early days, but just, you know, sure. just to gauge. You, you took my exact question from me. I was going to ask him, how, <laughs> how does one right question. set it up and get involved? So I've done a lot of this work on the back end where, like, building DMGs and uh, image files. But anyways, for the end user for this, it's actually going to be pretty simple. You just... Oh, that's cool. Give me a testnet address. Somebody's already on it. But anyways, 
you basically just install a little program. It opens up um, a little web app, and that's it. Then you can interact with it through a complete. Uh, it, there's a GUI right now, like a user interface, um, and it's getting better every day. Uh, they're currently taking all sorts of information from the people in the DAO and people playing with the test net and, you know, turning over pretty quick, getting these ideas out and fixing bugs and doing this and that. It's really, um, what's the word for it that corporate people use? I'm probably not going to be able to figure that out. But anyways, like, user input is being converted into results pretty quickly. It's, it, you love to see it. Awesome. So, Sweet. so y you've been uh, part of this testing for a while now. How has your experience been so far with it? I started on day one uh, when, when it was like, I was one of the first people to actually get the test kit since my order was fulfilled first, <laughs> just because I was there with the, the team when we were working out some bugs and uh, for the store front or back end. But um, it was rough at first, right? Uh, as most of these things are when you roll out a brand new product. So but yeah, um, it's gotten quickly, it gotten way better. Um, I was there with the nuts and bolts, right? I've been following this project and working pretty closely with the creators since the beginning. Well, since I started working at Grid Plus six months ago. So, but yeah, I mean, it's a pretty fluid experience. The GUI, I, I don't, maybe I should say that the graphical user interface that you get is not like most new projects you'll see in crypto. Uh, like most test nets you'll see is like command line driven entirely and stuff like that. This is more point and click, basically, maybe copy paste an address here and there. And yes, oh, old boy, I will get you my testnet address. Hold on, I have to plug in the card. <laughs> All right, that sounds actually pretty neat. So, um, yeah, you're going to want this Poe app. <laughs> yeah. So, um, what kind of things have you seen be able to be changed so far? So from day one, it worked one way. You're able to test it out and able to get some feedback in there. What kind of feedback has been given and how has that made the product better so far? So a lot of UI fixes, um, like things on the screen or on the, on the web app updating, uh, when like at first they maybe weren't updating or it'd be like, am I connected or not? Cause there's like a, a server that people connect to. Um, and you can run your own server for this, by the way, in the long run, like if people are concerned about that sort of thing. They fixed a lot of UI stuff. Um, some of the wrapping transactions, like when you send to the phone on contract, uh, sometimes it would like misrepresent what was actually in there. They fixed that pretty quickly. Um, confirmation was a big thing. I don't know if they fixed that yet. I need to, I need to actually jump back in the testnet uh, chat and see what's going on there. Um, but knowing that it's been sent and getting confirmation was a thing that I noticed didn't work at first. It was working for some people, but it depends on a lot of things, right? Your setup, um, what asset you wrapped, uh, stuff like that. And again, these, these transfers don't cost gas. It's sort of interesting. It's like sending a P2P message, like a signal message, if you're familiar with Signal Messenger. Yes, very familiar. Mm -hmm. One of the best uh, messaging apps, I would say. Yeah, highly recommend it. <laughs> yes, highly recommend using Signal as a, a main way to communicate through text messaging. But all yeah. right. Yeah, <laughs> is there I, a... I could maybe answer more questions, but honestly, I should probably jump back in the testnet uh, chat on the uh, Discord. It's been two days since I played with it, so. Oh, no, uh, really, the only thing I wanted to ask was, is there anything that uh, else that you wanted to say about it before we move on to the next uh, order of business that you want to talk about? Um, Not really a quantitative statement, more of just uh, it's super interesting to finally have a way that you can send any asset privately without paying fees. It's just interesting. It's an interesting project. It definitely warrants your attention. It could be big. I mean, I, I, uh, sorry, I personally think it's really exciting. And it could, yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, it is pretty exciting to see that there's going to be some infrastructure in place to allow people to do peer to peer transactions and they're not going to have to necessarily worry about, oh man, what? Network, do I need to send this on? Like, uh, how much is GUI at the moment? And things like that. Yeah, I guess I'll add one more thing. Um, it currently supports any ETH or ERC20. Um, I assume it's also going to expand into EVMs and Bitcoin as well. Basically, any crypto can be wrapped as a phonon and sent. All phonons look the same. That's actually a physics reference. One of the creators was a, a fellow uh, physics graduate. 
So yeah, there's a lot of physics reference in phonon. The name phonon actually comes from, I think it's like virtual photons, it's heat pseudoparticles. Anyways, I won't go down that Ooh, rabbit hole. Yeah, that's a, that, that's a big science rabbit hole right there. You're right. Yeah, big brain. <laughs> Yeah, thanks for letting me blab about it. There's a cool poem that uh, I shamelessly am going to pump. I made that. It was a lot of fun. Um, so, yeah, just join the test net. You will get a poem, and you also get um, rewarded for, you know, helping them test it out and helping them improve the product. Sounds like a great opportunity. Yep. All right. So now we're going to move on to our next order of business here. So Logic Beach, you're also going to be in charge of the Merge Poap.art canvas. Tell me about that. Well, I want to extend that invitation to you because I, I really, uh, I, I've done these before. I've, I like to call myself the uh, Canvas coordinator. I like to get people together and uh, get guilds from various communities in the poap.art Discord, which I will share in just a moment. Um, Are you legit yeah. asking him like on live air, like, hey, can you do this favor for hey, me? Look, I, <laughs> sent, I sent him a DM like a day ago. I oh, just okay. That's yeah, cool. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm definitely <laughs> I, I'm, in the mix here. Yeah. So I'd like to, I want to, like, I'm going to be, like, uh, the general, but I need some, uh, I don't know what you call it. I don't know how army titles work. <laughs> but anyways, here's everyone's formal ticket to this event. Like, please join the mainnet merge call. I have included so many entry poaps. Uh, most people will probably have some of these poaps if you've been around. Uh, the last few community po call poaps will get you entry into this. Um, and I'll actually share a list of the poaps at some point once we finalize that. I, uh, zoom out and like kind of tell us what poet art is and why we're going to use it. Ah, uh, see, that's hard. Okay, <laughs> it's not that hard. Just give me a second. I'm copying and pasting the thing in here. All right, I'll deliver it real quick. So, poet art is, art is yeah, poet art is a uh, it's an extension of poet. Um, it was an idea that Patricio had a couple of years ago, and essentially, if you have a poet, you can go to a site uh, and you can click on a wide canvas to color one pixel, um, maybe like one pixel every half second. Um, if you have multiple uh, PO apps for an event, you can actually speed up the, or actually reduce the delay between the number of pixels that you can drop. So let's say you have 10 pixels for this uh, canvas, you can drop pixels really quickly and you end up being able to create really beautiful art. And one of the things we wanted to do for the, merge uh launch call the official merge launch call i don't know if it official is right the east Acre, bankless Thanks. and daily gray uh merge call is to have a great uh canvas and invite everybody to uh kind of like invite all the communities to kind of do their own little area because um, it, it turns out to look so much better if we have communities of 20 or 30 people creating something than everyone doing their own thing uh, and so Logic Beach has a really great talent for bringing these communities together and sort of like idealizing what the canvas might look like if everyone coordinates. And we know that, that everyone's not going to coordinate perfectly, but we have seen really great results whenever when all of the communities work together on one big idea. And that's a great way to set the stage for like what the merge means. Yeah, I did want to uh, sort of mirror what you just said. Like having communities planning things is so much more fun than everyone jumping in and just doing a random signature. Um, and I don't want to like point fingers anywhere, but I loved uh, the times that we had a good amount of preparation and like I actually put in the work and uh, the community came together as well, like and organized some cool stuff. Like that rocket pool canvas was a blast. Like trying to get a gradient in there uh, was really difficult and really fun uh i have more to say but you know on the spot i'm gonna lose it all <laughs> oh oh okay so anyone listening if you're part of a community anywhere um please go into that poap.art discord um and go to i think it's called um coordination general and if you just want to tag me in there and say hey my community wants a guild i'll create you a channel in there and we can start coordinating stuff i know it's like three weeks i think almost exactly away for from the merge but hey the more time we have to plan the more fun it's going to be so yeah crazy thing please jump in there and uh, right? yeah three weeks right <laughs> and if you haven't been to one of these painting parties like you have to organize beforehand otherwise you get there you start putting pixels down 
somebody draws over it and you can't get anything down. You have to have like a guild to be able to put something on a canvas. Yeah, totally. Or you accidentally step on someone else's guild and you have a thousand people like canceling you as quickly as possible. <laughs> the guild wars it's so are much funny. fun. It's so much it's fun. Really and you fun. should really, yeah. and you, uh, everybody should really allocate like the entire time that the, the canvas is open because if you leave for 10 seconds, your, your picture is graffitied. Yep. You got yeah. to defend and, your um, territory. This right? is a huge deal because it is, it, it will likely, it, this is the biggest event in Ethereum since launch. Uh, and so we're expecting an extremely large audience, a whole lot of participants. And so let's say your community is something like Poapathon, like, or um, I also love like Nifty Eek. Like if you come with your community and you guys are ready to, to create, then you're going to be able to get your product in front of a lot of eyes. And that's really valuable. I've been pushing Grid Plus. Like, hey guys, we're going to be on here. Let's like get the whole team. There's like 16 of us. We're going to jump in here and like, Put a whole lattice wallet on there. <laughs> oh, so I want to give some details about the canvas. So it's going to be 512 pixels by 256 vertical. Um, I think it's going to start two hours before the actual mainnet merge call. Uh, I can't remember. You and me and Superfizz talked about this off offline somewhere. Uh, so two hours at that size, that canvas is really going to fill up. So you're going to want to be in there uh, with your guild getting it going. So. Um, usually before these calls, I try to like, <laughs> um, mediate guilds and be like, okay, you guys start here. So a lot of guilds don't try to start in the same place. And I mean, guild wars are fun. It's hilarious. Like <laughs> watching, <laughs> watching that happen in real time and getting an animation of it after the fact is really fun as well. Just yes. seeing which guilds like won out in a, in a battle. Um, I also... I, I don't want to steal too much time for this, but I've been drawing these robots every day, just uh, like uh, Song of Dao. I'm going to conscript the community as the Logic Beach Guild to draw that day's robot live on that canvas for the merge call. I'm going to hijack a little corner. I don't care. I'm, I'm, I'm going like, to do it. <laughs> yeah. I think that's yeah, it for this. Uh, if uh, there's not dog. a Logic bot on there, I'm going to be angry. Yeah, hey, can we make it? it can you make I'll it? I'll offer a pop app for actually. You know, okay. Here's what's gonna happen. An, that will an be octopus mint. logic bot. You know, what's funny is I was just talking about an octobot. <laughs> octobot. I love yeah, it. So I am actually I'm gonna mint that and I'll fractionalize it to anybody who even placed a pixel to make it happen and give that to all those people. Ooh, that sounds. Does really the cool. pixel have to be visible at the end? For yes. the way that I capture it at the end, yes, it has to be a pixel that okay. was there at the end. I know that's sort of like, ah, uh, why? But the way that the uh, no, 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 that's, that's API good. works, I can only get pixels at the end. That's, I mean, that's even better because then somebody can't like just come and drop one and then leave. They have to like make sure that their pixel stays there. Yeah, like help me fight. Like you're part of the Logic Beach Guild. That's what I'm rewarding you for. Not just placing a pixel, but like being on the team. <laughs> yeah, you can even place the same color on top of the same color. I and believe you can do that. somebody else's <laughs> pixel. <laughs> Oh, oh yeah. Yep. So there'll be a little bit of probably infighting in the Logic Beach Guild. <laughs> I don't know what you could do is change the robots. Oh, maybe it doesn't. I don't think it does. I tried to do it last week. Blue over blue. It won't take a pixel from uh, the, the same, same color. Data. Well, okay. shoot. There's other ways though. Change the change the robots' uh, eye color or changes. Uh, yeah. Take over uh, more territory, yo. Yeah. Make his arms extend and like. Do stuff. I don't know. <laughs> it's a robot. What do they do? All right, guys. That's a that's the poap dot art uh, canvas party for the mainnet merge merge call uh, slated to happen next. Uh, whether like hold on September a second. the September fifteenth. Right? Yeah. yeah, and it's going to be early in our morning. Uh, at least currently, that's what they're thinking. It could be earlier. Could be later. Yep. Who knows? This is going to be a great opportunity to just get involved with people in the community. Having something like yeah. this pop.art canvas, it's a really fun way to literally make your mark during the during the, this event. You know, you are literally placing a pixel your yourself. And as I said, it's like literally making your mark. And um Superfizz, yeah. I think it's very interesting how you said that this could even be a good opportunity for some brands to sort of work together and get their product out there by trying to get their logo and stuff onto the canvas. Well, I'm weird because I said products, but sorry, I'm eating salmon. 
so when I think of products, I I generally think of when it's open source projects. I'm afraid of like uh, corporate products coming in because they they really could see that as a valuable opportunity. Um, maybe that's not wrong. Maybe that's just a thing that they may do if they choose to do so. Perhaps. <laughs> I did want to say this is the biggest thing in crypto since Ethereum. This event, this merge call, like it's going to be a lot of eyes on this. This canvas is going to be all over the place. So yeah, it's gonna be fun to be a part of it. Yeah, I mean, it's also another incentive to actually come to the event at all, because you're going to be able to do a fun activity during it. Yep, but gonna be right. blessed. <laughs> really looking forward to that. I'm sure uh, some more information will come out on that later, especially since we're still pretty much creating the POAP allow list for that. We already got a fairly big list so far, but I'm sure that there's more that we're going to want to put on there. And yeah, it's large. And yeah, seriously, if you guys have any input on that, just send send me a link to the POAP app so it's easy for me. Don't make me do any more work. <laughs> right. And, uh, <laughs> and I also just want to reiterate that if you have one of the uh, POAP, community call POAPs from the uh, guild, if uh, part... Goodness, sorry, I'm, I'm all over myself right now. One of the ways that we're trying to give value to the PO apps that we give out here is using them as access to be able to go to this uh, poap.art canvas. And um, as we had spoke about earlier, the more PO apps that you have on the list, the faster you're able to place your pixels. So if you are a consistent listener of this call, you're, you should have a few PO apps that are going to qualify, so you should have a little bit less of a cooldown, and you should be able to place pixels a little faster. So hopefully that is a, another good way for us to give value to what we are able to uh, give y'all, but okay. That's Let's another thing that I didn't actually figure yet, is what the cooldown time would be for like the basic entry PO app, which is going to be the merge call PO app. Something like five to eight seconds. Um, there's a lot of entry pull ups, so um, yeah, I can imagine someone getting down to like a quarter second and just like. <laughs> yeah, for the Git pull app launch art canvas, I was like instant because like every single one of those, like I had so many pull ups are on the list that I had like instant pull down. I could just click, 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 and I was helping make the um, Git pull app logo. I, I think I was doing that with you, uh, Logic. I think you and me were primarily yeah. working on that. That's right. That was a fun one. Yes. That was a difficult one. That logo was, it, yeah. it started to be amorphous at a certain point. Like, no, we need to fix this. The dimensions are all wrong. Yeah. But watching yeah. that animation back was pretty cool. Yeah, I know. It, it pretty much turned to me like, okay, I'm able to place these pixels practically instantly. I'm just going to fill in the colors. And I, I, I pretty much allowed you to do the outline because I was like, okay, he probably has a better understanding of like where the pixel should go for the outline. I'll just make sure that it's filled in for him. And so I spent most of my time in that launch call filling in the Git Po app logo. And yeah. I also got always a good time. There too. It's always a good time. Always a good time. But all right, speaking of Git Po app, Nick Sorkish, you have a few updates for Git Po app once again this week. Excited for you hey, to share that's them. Me. Uh, so I shared last week. Am I really echoey? I feel like I'm really echoey. It's perfectly fine. Okay. Um, I shared last week that um, we will be on Gitcoin Passport uh, soon as a stamp um, to increase your matching percentage on the grant rounds. Um, well, our poll request got um, approved this week, so we're really excited and uh, are possibly going to be, are probably going to be um, integrated before the next grant round. Um, so get Po apps. Um, make you eligible for a higher match percentage on Gitcoin soon. Um, we also, our onboarding form is now live. It went live, I think, last Thursday or Friday. Um, so if you have a repo that um, somebody contributes to that you are building, that um, you want to offer Gitpo apps as incentive to get people to contribute, you can go over to gitpoapp.io slash onboard and onboard your own repo. Um, uh yeah and we also announced that um we had a seed round close and we raised 4.2 million dollars um from uh vcs and angel investors and we are super excited about that 
Uh, and we are going to have our first community call next Tuesday. So it's going to be, um, I'm not really sure what the platform is going to be yet. I'm, uh, I want to stream it on YouTube because as much as I love these pop community calls, I'm like not very good at um, concentrating in a, in a total um, auditory environment. Uh, so I really want to stream it on YouTube, uh, but we'll see. Uh, so it's going to be next Tuesday at 3 p.m. Eastern time. So if you guys want to come to that, you should come to that. They will definitely be. Oh, no, I, that I think is the I, end. I've lost her. Oh, OK, there we go. I lost you for a second, but you popped back in. Uh, all right, Nix. So you had quite a few things that you had dropped on us. I kind of want to take a second and sort of go back and hit them each one by one. So you talked about how Git Poeps are now part of the Gitcoin Passport. Can you describe to me what Gitcoin Passport is and why it's a good thing that Git pull-ups are now part of that? Yeah, for sure. Um, Git, Gitcoin Passport aims to, uh, to sort of relieve the problem of uh, civil resistance. So Gitcoin is an especially important um, place for civil resistance because they have matching funds. And so if you go on there and you donate $100, it doesn't get matched very high. But if 100 people donate $1, that all of those $1 uh, donations get matched really high because that thing that you donated to is seen as popularly supported. Mm -hmm. And we want to support uh, give quadratic funding. Quadratic funding aims to uh, support match match funding to projects that are popularly supported uh, by people who maybe don't have enough to donate a uh, hundred bucks each. Right. Power um, in numbers, basically. And power in numbers. And so um, the way that, that you can do that is to create something like a passport that has a bunch of stamps in it. So you say, look, I have a um, Facebook or I have a LinkedIn or I have a GitHub or I have an ENS. I'm probably a human. Um, what this does is it adds Git, Git PO apps in there, which are difficult to, um, more difficult to achieve than, some, than other um, NFTs. Uh, and uh, it places your per, uh, proof of human, humanness a little higher. Um, so we're really excited about that because it does, it does nail how, um, how valuable Git PO apps are. Yeah, they're a very uh, civil resistant form of a PO app because there's so much vetting that has to happen in order to actually get a Git PO app. So it's very great to see that it's going to be part of the uh, Gitcoin Passport. Very excited to see that. It's like another element of online, or I should say, on-chain identity that is being so it was put really in there. Yeah, it was cool. We're, um, we did another snapshot for Lens Profiles this week, and... Um... We saw a bunch of replies coming in from people trying to get lens profiles. And there was this whole conversation on Twitter happening in Turkish. I had to like translate every tweet. And somebody was talking about like, oh, I want a lens profile. How do I get it? So they were just trying, stabbing at every method, trying to do it. And somebody suggested get po apps and somebody responded and said, no, get po apps are hard to get, forget that. And I <laughs> love that because it was just someone searching yes. for like things that they could stab at. They didn't really want to, uh, they didn't really want to work for a Git pub, and they're like, no, 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 that's too hard. And I was like, yes, it is. See, if you love a project, it's, yeah, if you love a project, it's so easy to contribute to a project. It's so easy to go to their docs and be like, oh, this hasn't been updated in a year. Let me just make a pull request for that real quick. Um, this is a good shout need... out. I, I have a, a, a merge media project. Um, if you look at my GitHub uh, for Superfiz, I have a merge media project that's offering GitHub, um, yeah, Get PO apps to people who who provide media guidance around the merge. And so really all you have to do is look at that and figure out a way to contribute. It's not code based. It's just something we want to share with media outlets. So a lot of people will find easy ways to contribute. Um, and it really benefits us during the merge to give uh, journalists something to refer to. Yeah, and that's so easy. Like, have you, I bet, I bet everybody listening to this call who pays attention to crypto at all has seen a good resource in the last week about like some facet of the merge. And all you have to do is go over to Superfiz's um, Ethereum merge media uh, repo and like figure out where that belongs and make a little explainer of it and put it in. 
you don't have to code. You don't have to do anything. All you have to do is figure out how to make a pull request. Yeah, and I just want to say real quick that I think it's great that GitPub is branching out more into non-coding uh, and like non-technical uh, development GitPub apps as well. I think it's a great opportunity for people like, like me, especially who I'm not really the most uh, savvy when it comes to doing uh, like coding and things like that, but I can definitely write an article about the Ethereum merge or I can make a YouTube video about the Ethereum merge. And it's just a good opportunity to be able to snag. We're actually, GitHub's yeah. Anyway. And we're branching out further than that soon. Uh, we really want to be able to include valuable contributions. Like, um, I know Supervis is going to hate this example, but Supervis is a really good community steward and he has done so much for the, uh, for the merge and for staking. And like, there are a lot of things that he wouldn't qualify for coding wise, but we do want to recognize those kind of contributions. So we are figuring out some communities right now to do some beta testing with. So it would be something like, we haven't, we haven't nailed this down yet, but it would be something like contacting the maintainers, figuring out um, what kind of con contributions are the most valuable to them and like what they would want to reward. So they might have a community steward um, a category of people that they want to reward. They might have like a consistent designer category who designs their PO apps or designs um, other branding assets or other assets that they have or even like the people who make the memes who just like are really good at hype. So we're figuring out um, who are going to be our beta testers for that. Um, like what projects are going to be our beta testers for that. Um, and we will update you when we figure that out. Great. And so that kind of segues right into the next point that we have on our agenda too. And that is the onboarding form is live. So you are the onboarding lead at GitPo app. So can you describe to me what that has entailed for you so far and what this form going live is going to do for you? Um, it's been it's been trial and error. Um, so we've made the onboarding form. We were really stoked. All you have to do is go over to that um, site and click. It shows you your repos that are that you can onboard and you can just submit them. And what what that does is it submits it to me for a manual review. I look at it. Um, and then I pass it off to our designers to make a PO app and then I send it to the project and I say, hey, has this design, let's make the um, PO app and then they give me some feedback and then we launch it. Um, however, uh, I think that a lot of people aren't very clear on the fact that there's a manual review step because we have gotten so many people who just um, have been submitting empty repositories. <laughs> Um, and so we've been waiting through, we've been uh, figuring out exactly how to filter those people out. Um, and so I'm excited for, um, our engineers are, our engineers are amazing. They immediately took a look at that and, um, just found what was like similar between those people who were submitting empty repositories or like repositories that they had just made and like put in some, um, starter tutorial project or something like that. Um, so it has definitely been, um, a process. Um, but I'm excited because we got, we got a lot of really good repos, uh, that people, have submitted the queue is the queue like jumped to like 200 and something it was wow. great <laughs> yeah so what kind of things do you look at for a uh, repo that's trying to onboard uh so we want to see that a um a repo is a real project we want to see that it has a readme that people that somebody is actually really trying to make a project work that it has some history that it wasn't created yesterday that there are some contributors that it is something that has product market fit that somebody wants to use it that people want want it to be built um yeah that it's going to be a useful tool and that that person's actually going to consistently contribute to it and isn't just trying to game the system to get get po apps awesome and i'm sure that you're going to be looking over that with a uh fine eye yeah i we we do look over that with a fine tooth comb pretty much not pretty much. No one makes it through who isn't a um, a valuable project. A project. Uh, yeah, I'd like to uh, <laughs> have a little issue with that, ma'am. <laughs> Except Superfist. Superfist gets a um, exception. Super valuable. Like exactly. <laughs> His is a super valuable repo. It's 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 not just valuable. Super valuable for Superfizz. But all right, so yes, you were able to raise the 4.2 million in the seed round. Congratulations on that. Not not too much to say on that other than uh. Hey, congratulations on the funding, able to keep the lights on for longer. 
Yeah, and we're we're excited about that, especially it was a really good time to announce that because we're actually having a team week right now. So I'm in New York City with um, a lot of the GitHo app team. Um, and this is where our office is. And so we have all been working out of the office and um, getting all these um, kinks worked out. We've gotten so much done in the last three days compared to like being working remotely because it's so, it just takes a lot more time when someone isn't sitting right in front of you. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I know a lot of people on that team. I bet it's been an absolute pleasure to be able to work with them in person. They're so fun. I love all of my coworkers. I'm so stoked to be working at this company. You were going to say something, Super Fizz? I was going to say something inappropriate, and I decided it was better for private chat. Okay. All right. So tell me about the community call that's going to happen next Tuesday. You said that was at, uh, what, 3 p.m. Eastern? It's 3 p.m. Eastern, and we are going to have Wackerow from Ethereum.org. And basically, um, Ethereum.org is one of the very early projects that onboarded on the GitHub app um, and has been using GitHub app for a while. And they were actually one of the, um, I believe that they were one of the incentives for creating GitHub app because they were already, um, they were already rewarding their contributors with, with POAPs for contributions. And as a result, they have a ton of contributors who then all qualified for Git POAPs. And so okay, we are Paul is definitely in here. Paul is in here because he hey. just submitted a PR to the media uh, uh, repository. Oh my God. Paul, raise your <laughs> hand. <Come up. laughs> the hand raise thing isn't working. Uh, um, yeah, I'm really excited. Um, one thing. I like, I'm really excited to talk to him because I have so many questions about how Ethereum.org came to be. Like Ethereum.org is an amazing site. They have amazing illustrations. It's, uh, it's something I'm really excited to ask sort of the origins and the, uh, the things that are happening in Ethereum.org. Hey, Paul, how's it going? Hey, folks. How you doing? Welcome up. Doing great. I actually, um, Ethereum.org had a community call uh, this morning that I got to go to. Yes, we did. It's well places now. <laughs> <laughs> we are just having community call after community call. Uh, you guys demonstrated a lot of very cool features that I did not know were in production at Ethereum.org. We can talk more next week, apparently. <laughs> Definitely. All right. So I think we're going to go ahead and pivot on to our next topic for today. Thank you, Nix, for giving us all those updates on Gitpo app. Definitely some great alpha from you. Thanks for giving me the floor. All right. So Super Fizz, you had recently posted a video. I believe you posted it yesterday or the day before talking about some new tools, talking about Po app checkout and then Disperse app. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to link the uh, YouTube video into the community calls channel here. Can you I think I did this at like 10 o'clock last night while I was about to go to bed, but I was like, I really want to get this done. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about this pull up checkout. What is it all about? How did it come to be? Um, so I want to give like the big whole shebang because no one cares. Um, so it kind of started. Well, OK, so we have a. Um, not just a civil resistance, but also a spam resistance problem in POAP. Uh, and obviously, you know, we're looking for lots of ways to solve it. POAP is looking for lots of ways to solve it. I'm not, I don't do much. Um, and Mentor developed a, um, a tool called POAP Checkout. And essentially what this means is you can go to POAP Checkout and basically give it your POAP. And it's going to, uh, my, my young visitor is here. I, I'm not going to open the door because my young visitor will come in. Um, so you, you can create a PO app, um, set it up a PO app checkout, and give people the link, and they can check out and claim the PO app. Uh, and so I was really happy with how well Nick's hosted uh, a community call the other day, and I wanted to give some appreciation. Uh, <laughs> hold on one moment. Uh, I, if I can. My, my door like, is being uh, banged on, but I by a three-year-old, but I can't open yes. it. Will um, Fizz trying to check out what's going yes. on in daddy's office. Tonight. Yes, yes. Um, so anyway, <laughs> I'm working right now, buddy. Go see mama. Yeah, I, I should have muted when I yelled that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm, my attention is torn. So anyway, um, 
I decided it would be a great opportunity to uh, appreciate Nix by setting up a poet through Poet Checkout um, and directing the funds to her. Uh, and so uh, for 0.01 ETH, you could claim that POEP and show appreciation. And I, I thought that was a great idea. But I've also had this idea in my head, and I say it a lot. Um, POEP issuers should give value back to POEPs. It is a very important part of our ecosystem that hasn't really happened yet. Uh, and so um, I use that as an example to uh, go to Disperse app. Um, and I use POEP Gallery to export the addresses of the people who bought the PO app. Uh, and so then I have this list of addresses. You can take that to Disperse app, put it in, and you can send funds to those people. Uh, and that's kind of what I did. Um, and it's really, it, it, I want to set the example of uh, the community rewarding people who have made contributions, the people who maybe you hold a Genesis PO app or an East Acre PO app, or maybe. Um, you know, there's a group of people who did something that you appreciate, uh, and you can take those addresses and give them direct value. Or maybe you're doing an airdrop and you want to include them. It's really easy to export those addresses from Poap Gallery. I'm sorry, yeah, Poap Gallery, and then uh, give those those holders value. Yeah, it's a very interesting concept. I uh, I watched your video last night, and I was like. Yeah, that's a pretty good use of that Disperse app. You had uh, shown that to us maybe last week or a week and a half ago or so now. And I was like, hmm, I wonder how this can be used in some unique and interesting ways. And I, I think you've sort of done that. So tell me about this uh, this call that Nick Sorakish hosted. Like, what was the uh, the reason behind the PO app that you would given out? Uh, well, we, we hold community calls uh, pretty frequently. And every time we have... Um, you know, a, a provider that we're interested in or someone wanna, we want to learn more about, uh, eSticker will invite them on um, and just sort of learn more about them. Uh, and I was just really happy with the way that Nick Sorakish like uh, just navigated that call and was uh, pleasant and, and really just set the appropriate tone for it. It really went really well. Hey, props to Nick's for that. It was, it was a good time. But yeah, so, so and I, I mean, for me, it is my way of showing appreciation, like um, to people who appreciate our team members. There are so many ways to give back value instead of just extracting value. And if if you know like things about like the flywheel effect and about like building successful communities, it is not just taking from them; it is giving back to them and then getting rewarded. It well, it's not about the reward, but it's giving back. Like that's what built the community. Uh, and that's really what I want to encourage people to do. Awesome. Yeah, it's definitely something that I love to see whenever people, they give out a PO app and then they're able to to basically actually give it some more purpose other than just, oh, you showed up to this event and you got a PO app, congratulations. It is really nice to see these issuers come out and they just inject value into these NFTs. It's a great thing to see. We're really excited about this video at Get Poap um, that Superfiz made demonstrating this because this is something that is very useful to projects um, for Get Poaps because if you have a list of all of your contributors and you want to be like, hey, just launched this thing, everybody, thank you for contributing, you would just drop them like 10 bucks each in one transaction. Yeah, it's a very interesting thing that you just mentioned that because there is this process I'm thinking of now. So a lot of these... Uh, Git PO app repos, I guess you could call them. They are open source and they're public goods. And a lot of them have things like a um, Gitcoin grant and things like that. And so to be able to say, oh, well, if you contributed to our project, whenever we get the funds for our Gitcoin grant, since uh, we know that you contributed to us through the Git PO app, we can just pull the addresses from this Git PO app. And here's your small payout for helping contribute to us. Yeah, we love that. We love that for sure. But all right, is there anything else that you have to say about this super fizz? Nope. I just want to uh, kind of push the whole idea of, um, you know, the people here who are listening, like maybe you're just here for the poet and that's cool. 
But I really would encourage everyone to think about ways that they can give back to um, the people who are building Ethereum. Like that is, that's kind of why we're here. Yep. I totally agree with that. And I'm behind it 100%. I'm all about giving value where value is supposed to be given, you know, or, uh, or how, how am I trying to say this? I think I sort of didn't say that right. I'm all for giving value to those who give value. There we go. That's what I was trying to say. But all right, everyone. So it's time to talk about our community discussion topic. So recently, POAP had announced that they had changed their POAP quality guidelines. I'm going to go ahead and put the link to the discourse post. And Amanda, I think you're the one who will be able to talk about this fairly well. And uh, Anthony, uh, I think you'll be able to uh, chip in on this as well. But one of the uh, changes that was made was pre-announcing POAPs being now against some POAP quality guidelines. Uh, Amanda, would you like to sort of describe what this is to us? Yeah, I think it's um it's definitely a guideline. Um, I think uh, it's just we really have noticed that when a community is on Twitter or or anywhere in their public facing roles and they say, hey, if you come to this online event, you're going to get a pull up uh, that just attracts farmers. And it's unfortunate <laughs> that there are so many farmers and they really aren't great for the protocol. So um, we are trying to help curb that and, you know, see the places that we can kind of recommend better drop type situations and better communication around secrets and and things like that. Um, Pull-ups are precious memories. So we, you know, if you put out the fresh pie, people are coming to get it. <laughs> so we don't, we were trying to curb that. Um, so. Right. So as the lead over the creation team, whenever you're looking at pull-up petitions, is there anything that sticks out in those that makes it look like it's only for engagement farming? Or is like, what kind of research is put into these petitions to make sure that something like this isn't happening? Uh, it is definitely a, a very manual research process. Uh, we look through the resources submitted by the, the issuer, and then we also go to social media and, and look at that and kind of see what types of events they have. And are they just saying on their Twitter, if you come to our space, they'll get a pull-up. We, we, don't, no, we don't want that. Um, what I notice, I guess, most about petitions is, is what sticks out to me first is really you can tell when somebody's put effort into it because they're trying to capture something special to them. And, and share it with people and, and that's really hard to fake I think to some degree um, you really you get that authenticity from people mm -hmm. and uh, Anthony I'm kind of interested in your take on all this uh, do you have any words to say about these changes or this update I'm not able to hear you brother maybe you need to leave the stage and pop back up But all right, so uh, yeah, I don't know if this is me or not. Uh, is anybody able to hear Anthony? Nope. Nope, right. I cannot hear him. All right, just making sure I wasn't going crazy there. Hi. <laughs> he'll he'll be right back up. Yeah, Yo, can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you now, yeah, sir. Awesome. All right, so yeah, again, I, I the, uh, the uh, question was, what is your take on this announcement? And uh, I'll just go ahead and let you speak. Yeah, so I'm just uh, I'm happy that a another guideline has came out from the curation body. Um, I just think the the more communication, the better, and they're like really, really doing well and ramping up their efforts internally, and they're creating a communication strategy behind that. And I think the community will be hearing from them a lot more, and it's all for the betterment of of POAP. And I do think that um, it's good for issuers to ensure they're staying on top of the guidelines and giving their opinion on them, whether they agree or disagree. Um, the curation body is a, has a lot of authority in the POAP ecosystem, but issuers still have a responsibility or at least um, an ability to help shape the protocol. And so they should have their voice heard. Um, and if, if it's good insight, 
the curation body will very much accept what they have to say and hopefully help it shape their policies as well. So like any any good kind of free market, we want inputs from various different sources and hopefully all those inputs will just formulate a better future. Excellent. All right, so Amanda, I'm going to go back to you on this one. So one of the questions that I have is say somebody had partook in this activity, they pre-announced that there was a PO app for their event. What kind of steps does the creation body take against that person? Well, I think the language against is is the first. Sure, uh, it's not sure. Really, uh, yeah, that's probably a little bit too strong. <laughs> We're not uh, making actions against anyone. We're just trying to help shape the protocol and and, and guard it and, and be those guardians that can help let the PO-op community and PO-op citizens experiment with it and explore with it because we want that. But we also have to say, hey, that exploration might, you know, kill the whole tree. And that's that's what we're, we're so it's we don't take action against anyone in this case. Um, OK, cool. so it has arised. Uh, so if we're looking at your petition and you say, hey, I, I, I need 100 more. I'm so popular. I want 100 more people came to my space. And we look at your Twitter and we see. Well, a hundred more people came to your space because you 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 put that people get a call up, right? Yeah. <laughs> so if it's before the event, we we do ask communities. We say, do you mind taking that down because you're 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 a sugars sugar to flies here. You're you're getting everyone in. You know, you're you're honey and <laughs> bees and such. But we right. ask that they take it down. And then um, if it's after the event, I mean, that's really just it happens. And then our the next event you submit, we may notice and say, hey. You were terribly farmed last time, and this could be part of the reason why. Um, we're really here to to team with issuers to get their pull ups out and to to make that happen. And and like Anthony said, we really appreciate the community input, and we we look forward to having these these discourse types of discussions, these robust, passionate feelings about where the protocol should go. Um, so we we want that, and and we're we're here to team and and really all of us love pull-ups so much and, and the curation body, you know, we, we love, we get to see all the pull-ups. It's working at the Wonka factory. We, we want issuers to succeed. We want to help them do that because we want to help everyone preserve their memories. Right. Yeah. It's pretty much about making sure that all these pull-up drops are still quality, right? You don't necessarily want to have a pull-up drop that anybody can get or, you know, oh, hey, everybody knows it's happening because it was announced. So we're just going to go there for the PO app and we don't even care about your community. We just want the PO app. Yeah, I, I, you really hit the, the hell on the nail on the head, though. Like, why are you acting? What is motivating your action? Is it to get a PO app or is it to participate with the community? Right. And I, I also do have that uh, sort of mindset where it's like whenever you pre-announce a PO app, it is... It is engagement farming. I, I feel like you're just trying to get people to come to your space because you want to say, oh, we have a big number of people here today. But they mm -hmm. may not necessarily care, even be listening. They may not even speak the language that you're speaking in that moment, right? So. I think another, um, on the opposite of what uh, Superfiz was saying also is, is the issuer giving this po op? because they actually care about their community and they, they want to reward their community with a special moment that they share together? Or is it, if I give this po op, more people will like me? And, and we, don't, we don't want that type of artificial engagement building because at the end of the day, it just leaves hollow communities. Yeah, I was going to say, how, how good is that engagement when, you, I, I'm going to use that phrase again, that Superfish just used, you hit the nail on the head there. Whenever you're trying to use POAPs as a form of engagement farming, you really are left with hollow community because people, they will come in, they will get their POAP, and then they will leave. And unless you are giving them another POAP later, they're not going to necessarily care because they're just going to see you as the POAP party machine, right? Mm -hmm. And it does lead to frustrated issuers and, and frustrated community members because I may dedicate so much of my time to a community, but I don't get to collect their POAPs because they're all gone. And farmers come and, and take all the goods and, and then nobody gets it. Kind of yeah. like the Costco free food tray. <laughs> yeah. Nothing leaves a worse taste in your mouth as an issuer or as a participant when you you interact and you engage and then it is time to get the PO app and you end up not being able to get it because people who were just there uh, for the PO app because in this instance it was pre-announced and so they all went there. 
you know, it, uh, like I said, it leaves a bad taste in your mouth. It, it It's almost like, wow, like, yeah, I was going to be given this token of appreciation, but it, it, it sort of got, like, taken from me because people who just wanted the Poep were here instead. Yeah, it really can lead to a lot of a lot of mixed feelings uh, around the around the whole ecosystem. I I have mixed feelings about farmers. I know that they're they're people and they and they love co-op as we do and they care as we do, but it's it's extremely increasingly uh, difficult to kind of you know sympathize with that when it's you see the what type of havoc they may be wreaking on on people that are genuinely trying to show up and be a part of something. Right. But okay, so I highly encourage everybody to, again, go to the discourse post. I'm going to link to it one more time here in the Community Calls channel. So be sure to give your feedback and your thoughts because POAP, is, uh, Poap Inc. are always looking for your feedback. So be sure to give it to them. But all right, we are reaching the end of our time this week, everyone. So now it's time to talk about how you can get this POAP from our call today. So you're going to want to go to the Join Guild channel here in the official POAP Discord. It should be right above the Community Calls chat. And if you haven't already, you're going to want to click on the link to join the guild. Um, I'm going to ask that somebody actually open up the claiming, uh, either Logic Beach or Anthony or Superfizz, whoever's able to do that while I describe this. Sorry, trying to get a Git POAP right now. Oh, goodness. Maybe I need to do it myself. That's fine. I can pop on over there while I talk about this. So That's I'm... basically why I disappeared. <laughs> I'm trying to get this guild. Oh, all good, all good. I will go ahead and get I don't even know how to now. use guild yet. I'm I'm a slacker. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm going to push it right now. Um, okay, cool. And then, Great. yeah, no worries. Great. So whenever that message pops up, as long as you have the guild door roll here in this Discord, you should be able to click on the button that says Claim POAP. It's going to take you to guild.xyz, the POAP guild on there. And then you are going to contribute on either Ethereum mainnet, a dollar worth of Ether, or you can be on the Polygon network and you can contribute about a dollar worth of Matic or one die. So this week we were able to add in a stable coin and I went with die because that's the one that was the only option for me on Polygon. So, uh, yep, you can either do about a dollar worth of ETH on mainnet or be on Polygon and give about a dollar worth of Matic or one die. And again, make sure you are on the correct network. If you are on mainnet, you will, you will have to use ETH and it will be through, you know, that mainnet L1 gas. So a hey. dollar and eleven cents. So it wasn't too bad. Hey, and I'm getting uh, an interaction failed, and it looks like the community is starting to type "not working" oh, with no. emojis. So Let's uh, see what I can do. I can I can push it again, and maybe that'll help. Let uh, me attempt not, to do that. Mine was successful, and I do have a claim link. I wonder if I'm even Beautiful. able to post it in there. Beautiful. I'll, I'll push it again. It's not a problem. Okay. No, no problem. But all right, everyone. Hopefully that gets solved. I think maybe we should sort of stick around just to make sure that that goes through. I'll push it to the community calls channel as well. Excellent. I'm going to head out with my family, so I will see you all later. Have a great day. Have a good night. Have a great face. night. Good night. Yep, and also to everyone else, hope you have a great night. Be sure to uh, check out the POAP YouTube channel. If you miss anything from this call, these calls get uploaded to there every single night after the call is over. So if there's anything uh, that you need to re-listen -re or you're just unsure about something, you know, you need to go back and, and see what it was. It's going to be on there for y'all. But okay, everyone. Glad to have you this week. Thank you so much to uh, Nixorakish, Amanda, Logic Beach. Anthony, Superfizz, he had left already. Thank you so much for coming up and talking to me about this great community. Thanks, Madra. Thanks so much. Bye-bye, everyone. Take care. See you next week. Good night. Bye. Thanks, Madra.